so tell me about that and what uh, what what you sort of asked of him and then what he what he delivered. Well, I, I don't think personally I asked for much. It, it was really what the script was asking for. You know, it's a script about an amateur bodybuilder with quite a bit of ambition of reaching some sort of bodybuilding uh, stardom. And aside from that, Jonathan approached knowing what work would be necessary to portray the role. And he certainly did that. Yeah, I mean, I think looking at the script and then having you know my chats with Bynum, I call him Bynum, by the way, Elijah, uh, but uh, Bynum. And tell me if you want me to start calling you Elijah. Don't, don't, don't change anything. I would, I would anything freak out. Now. I would freak out. <laughs> don't change um, anything now. Yeah, from the conversations with Bynum and, and the script he wrote, um, the character in the world was, it's very real. You know, it's very real. And so my approach um, for, for any role is to um, kind of find my way into a place of, uh, you know, non-acting. And so what was required via, you, know, you did supplement a good deal. You know, like you, you he sent me videos and, and, and books and, and watching those things. I said, okay, this is the standard, you know, trying to figure out where, um, where I needed to get to. And um, we got busy. Yeah. And what did that mean? What did, what did getting busy mean? So, I mean, we can talk numbers. It might be boring. So when we started the project, I was, when, when I read the project first, I was 168 pounds. Um, that was from the time I read it to cameras up was probably uh, 15 months. So in that time, I gained, uh, when the movie started, in competition day, I was one, no, I was two, I was, I was, no, it was 199, I was 198, 198.7, in the stat D. Uh, uh, I'm currently uh, 205. Um, but yeah, that, that arc was, okay, how to build, and because, you know, these, these are early interviews, uh, and because I had time, and because um, I'm an actor, we had many conversations like, okay, how are we gonna do this? And our biggest thing was, my, my thing was, uh, I mean, actually she was like, do whatever you gotta do, man, uh, was how to do it naturally, right? And that's what gave me the head start. It had 18 months to kind of get there. Um, and so because of that, the regimen, you cut all that shit out I just said, uh, but the regimen, the regimen was uh, building the muscle, you know, so, you know, 6,000 calories a day, you know, for months and months and months. Lots of rest, lots of sleep. Um, uh, Bottom helped us by, you know, helping me bring in uh, bodybuilding trainers and coaches um, because the, the posing is a big part of that too. So, I mean, you can imagine heavyweights three times a day, um, which is interesting, and I'll conclude. Uh, you should only train maybe twice a day, but there was something about the role of Killian, um, that ambition that he talked about. The excess. That, that. Yeah, the excess that pushes him yeah. uh, forward. You know, and that I really got bit by that bug. So I was doing three days, eating all the time, you know, really trying to embody and uh, find this character. So. And did it dovetail with Creed? Like, was it just like, oh, I'm changing my body for that and I'm changing my body for this? And it okay, here's the cheat sheet. Here's the quick version, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, so it goes, it goes Kang, Creed, Killian, right? But I know I'm playing Killian before all these roles. So I'm slowly training for Killian, right? But then I, get, then I get Kang, and so when I'm doing Kang, I'm building, but still but doing boxing for Damien. And in Damien, Mike's not going up against a guy that boxes every day. He's going up against a guy who's training to be a bodybuilder in the morning, and in the night, he's trying to be a you know, the world heavyweight champion of the world. So, uh, yeah, so Killian is being trained while I'm shooting Creed, and then, and then you hit that gear when it's all Killian, all bodybuilder. Um, and after Creed, there was a shift in your regimen, right? Big to prepare shift. Prepare for Maxine yeah, Dream. Big shift. Started eating a lot more. Started lifting a lot heavier. Um, and also, my mental started shifting. You know, uh, yes, yeah, like you need someone to hold the pads when you box. You know what I mean? You need that. You need that. You need a sparring partner. Um, with bodybuilding, you don't need anyone. Kind of internal, yeah. Extremely internal. Um, and that, of course begins to transition the instrument and the actor into the next world. And so that was, uh, that was helpful. They're all sort of grim but fun characters, is sort of my impression. I, Killian sounds like it's maybe more grim than your other uh, sort of 
these these three in a row that yeah, you did. Yeah. Um, but what was it like, sort of being in that headspace over that course of that that long time? Because they're all, I, I mean, they're I, they're not good guys necessarily, right? right. All, all these guys. But I mean, obviously, you're you're finding humanity. You're you're creating a human yeah. who has flaws and has, yeah, the has question, their own take on the world. The but. question then becomes, you know, if you look at the the the, the triad of them. People should be challenged as to what is a good guy. You know what I mean? And Thanks. the gr- like. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, and then and then as that. far as the <laughs> as far as the griminess, you know, life is life. You know what I mean? You're walking around with shit on your shoes right now. You don't even know it. You are. I guarantee it. You know what I mean? There's there's dirt and stuff under our fingernails. We have we have bacteria in our bellies. You know, we are always these two things. Um, I had the opportunity with these three roles and especially uh, with Killian to really hold that up you know, um, and allow folks to examine that. Um, so the beautiful thing about Killian is that I knew um, in his hands, one, I could go as deep as I needed to go. Um, and I also knew he would always bring me out, you know, and he, and he had to a few times. Um, but the beautiful thing about Magazine Dreams is that it'll, there's literally a light at the end of the tunnel, you know what I mean, for Killian, you know. Um, the other guys are, are continuing, and I mean, we'll talk about that when the time comes. But with Killian Maddox, his ambition and drive and search for self-love, love, leads him through the darkness. And he has to, he's in the dark, I believe, he's in one of the darkest places we can be in as, as human beings. Therefore, when he, we, we have the whole picture, the whole story to get him just to the brink of seeing the light. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, I mean, that's his journey. And, ju- and just to add to that, um, no matter what you write for this character and what journey they go on, if you cast Jonathan in the part, the amount of compassion and humanity that he brings to the role and respect and the dignity that he imparts on the role, the guy can never be anything other than someone that you feel empathy for. Mm. And that was a big part of like one of the gifts of, of getting on set and writing. You know, you, you write a character that's right on the line, sort of morally and ethically, and feels like it could swing one way or another and then some of our discussions in pre-production about treating the character with this respect and dignity and Mm -hmm. deep compassion Mm -hmm. and then whenever he has the magic juice that he has as an actor he gets there and um, you fall in love right away and you're along for that journey so we never looked at Killian and we were wondering like you know is, is he a bad guy or is this too much? It was we were just, we were rooting for him yeah. really the whole time. So how's he gonna get out of this? Yeah. God, how you gonna get out? How you gonna figure that out? And it wasn't just us. It yeah. was it was the crew, it was the people around. Yeah. I mean, there was so much care and um, concern for him. Yeah. Um, throughout the entire process. Throughout the entire process. Yeah. 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 I mean. And he mentioned Jonathan. You mentioned sort of uh, Elijah Bynum pulling you out of the the dark spaces when he needed yeah. to. What what did that look like for both of you guys? Oh man, I mean. I'll say it so he doesn't put me on blast and then he can co-sign. Um, there's a scene at the beginning uh, of the script um, where we're supposed to be training, you know, and we're just in there by, by myself and, and we, we go to a place and the weight just gets too heavy, right? Like, I, I, I've reached the limitations of my instrument, you know. Um, but then that's when that next thing comes in, you know. Whatever that is, it comes in. And that thing requires a certain expense of spirit and uh, emotion. And I was trembling, you know. Uh, I held it between the, between the it, we did it in chunks, you know. Our, 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 um, our DP uh, held us down and he was working that camera, working his crew, and Bynum was in there just, just really trying to capture everything that was going on, that free reign. And the body was just, my body was just giving, it was just giving out, you know. And then something else happened, I had this new hit, and, and my heart was broken. You know, it was like, it was like I was pushing, Killian's heart was broken, and he was pushing that emotion to get the weight up. And when that was over, when cut was cold, there was no cut. The body doesn't know. The body doesn't know this isn't real. You know what I mean? The body doesn't know that you didn't just go back and grab those images from that place at that time with that person, like they don't know that. And so it has to come down from that. And human touch, again, which is so close to the story of Killian, being touched, being seen, being loved. Uh, human touch is the one thing that can get you out. You know, it, it, it pumps your endorphins, it can calm you down. It can also do the opposite. Uh, but, it, but, but in that case, in this case, 
Barney came in, you know, you okay, brother? Brother, brother, I'm, I'm just down there, you know, tr literally trembling, crying. You know, everyone's been there before, maybe, probably in private. Um, but to do that publicly and then to have my director and brother come in and literally say, put his hands on me, you know, you okay? And then have the respect, you know, to go, all right, get up. <laughs> you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. You're good, we're good, all right, get up. You know what I mean, let's go. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is a magical piece and this is a magical director and uh, he helped me you know, make somebody I'm very proud of. Those are the moments when it's like, like being a director is like being like a minister in a way. Like it's a little like, like laying his hands and like and, and a, right. like sort of and guiding people spiritually. Like yeah. you're guiding his spirit of where where the you're okay. where the acting spirit's that's going and, just, make, yeah. and making sure that you know every your, everybody's cared for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's intense. Um, the thing that comes to my mind when you say uh, bodybuilding and ambition is uh, pumping iron and the, the, yeah. the Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary. Yeah. Um, was that a, a, a textual uh, or an, an element of oh the building block here? It certainly was for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I sent it his way, and I know he took a look at it. But that's the if there is one bodybuilding film to see, it would be that one. Yeah, and yeah. for good reason. Uh, and we stole little bits here and there out of it. Yeah, um, really to pay homage to to that you know the golden era of bodybuilding, what those guys were doing. Yeah, yeah. They paved yeah. the way for everyone who came after them. Yeah. It's a great resource, that piece, you know, and a, and a great uh, character study in addition to, like, the culture of bodybuilding. Yeah. The culture of bodybuilding and fitness at large is probably one of the most uh, romantic and beautiful and probably ancient um, industries that exist. You know, the body is uh, is the first part of technology, you know. It's mm -hmm. the first thing that we begin to use to help something, you know, our livelihood, you know. So to watch those men and and in that case, with men, and there's other documentaries with women, to watch those guys and gals kind of work it, work out their humanity through steel, through iron, is uh, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, and is your uh, cap today an homage to your previous time uh, here at Sundance a little bit? It's an homage to my life. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. It's the red cap. Yeah, it's nice to be back. Yeah, last black man in San Francisco. Now magazine dreams. I think that's a pretty. Pretty good duo. Um, and then the final question, I guess, the, the idea of the ambition of the character, um, as you sort of talked about in your director's statement and, and just now, um, uh, how much do you sort of share this sort of like ambition? Because um, feel, you feel like a very, you're an ambitious, ambitious actor, but maybe not, I don't know, like it's hard, it's hard to read that part of you because you're, I mean, you, you're, the trajectory has been like incredible. It's been, yeah, it's but, been 33 but, years. But, <laughs> it, like, it's like it's like overnight, and it's not right. Like yeah. both, and uh, is that is that ambition something you recognize instantly, or is it, or is it just like I've been doing my craft, I've been working, it, things come when they come. I guess. It's interesting. It's interesting uh, because a bodybuilder builds his body by lift, by lifting heavy weights. If you lift heavy weights, you get bigger, you get faster results. That also hurts more. You also can't do it all the time. You have to take some breaks in between. Um, I would, in this moment, uh, compare my career uh, to that. I haven't done as many projects as a lot of guys my age, but I've I've lifted some heavy weight. You know what I mean? Um, Killian Maddox is a heavy is a heavy thing to lift, and and there's repercussions. You know, and there's consequences to those things. And you can call that a uh, pretty cool trajectory. Um, but it's kind of physics, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And so does that mean you're ready for a break? Is that what that is? <laughs> no, that's the other thing. I mean, I mean we're not going to make this like uh, uh, inside the actor studio. But it is, it is kind of like, um, it's what I do, man. You know what I mean? I think about it all the time. You know, um, my cheat sheet, I think, is that it's an acting. And our industry is more of a lifestyle for me than it is a job. I never feel like I'm working. I mean, he can tell you on the job, it's, it, it's my publicist is there, you know what I mean? This fella here will meet me. I'm never, I'm actually never working, you know? I'm never working, you know? Therefore, I can, we can live forever or until the career says, that's a wrap, you know? So when it starts feeling like a job, I'll quit. I did all my, I, I did my training, you know? I did my schooling, that was work, that was hard, you know? This does get hard sometimes, um, 
Good. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>